round a chance for World Cycling Productions to bring you a brief insight into the great stage race from Paris to Nice, a race held in the month of March and is often referred to as the race to the sun. Alex Zula making his depart in the prologue time trial in Paris. Certainly a good time trial to start the race off with, Phil. 10.2 kilometres, but after 1.7 kilometres, a very tough climb, the climb of Mont Valorin. And for Zula, this was the first time this year that he'd be riding alongside his new teammate, Richard Viron, because one or two changes have come through the winter months. But it wasn't a good time trial for him, because when he came up to the line, he could only manage fifth. Well, the departure of his teammate, Richard Viron, already a winner this year, and thinking now, of course, of a fifth King of the Mountains in the upcoming Tour de France. Well, Verenck not really on his home turf here, riding a prologue time trial. He ended up finishing 35th. But Laurent Dufaux now, the Swiss rider on the Festina squad, coming up to the line with a very creditable perform prologue performance by him, Phil. As he came up to the line, he was fourth, second last year in Paris-Nice, already looking very good. So Laurent Dufour, a vastly underrated rider, fourth in last year's Tour de France. This is Bruno Boscodin, the Festina teammate, also putting in a very good performance. A lot of Festina riders cramming themselves into the top five of this prologue, but the man who started last, last year's winner, Laurent Jalabert, the winner of 1995, 96 and 97 in Paris-Nice, looking to try and hold the leader's jersey from day one right through to the very end. And this part of the course here, going through the Bois de Boulogne, certainly suited his power. Well, Jalabert, undoubtedly the world's number one, feeling uh, as he has won this race for the past three years, as Paul Sherwin has said, that he has something of a claim on this. But then the heavens really opened, the rain came down, and Jalabert's time only second fastest at the line. He thought he'd done just about enough to get himself right into shape for this year's Paris-Nice prologue, but he was seven seconds off the drift at the best time. And the best time was done by this young man, 23 years old, Frank Vandenbroek from Mouscron, just across the border in Belgium, the nephew of the team manager of the Lotto squad, Jean-Luc. And Jean-Luc has known success in the time trial and in the overall classification of Paris-Nice. He's never won the race, but he's finished in the top three. And now watching his nephew here turn in a tremendous performance. And this man, 23 years, now beginning to live up to his name as the future top cyclist from Belgium. This was a tremendous performance by Van der Broek, who claimed the first leader's white jersey of Paris-Nice. It certainly was almost 49 kilometres an hour for him. It would be the beginning of a very sensational week because for Jean-Luc Van der Broek, his uncle, he claims that Frank is in the best form that he's had for many years. No wins to his credit so far this season, so the prologue time trial victory, I should think, will be very sweet. So, on to stage one, and the sun's shining as the riders now begin their long journey south from Paris, heading down towards the Côte d'Azur. A fairly easy race as well, Montereau to Sens, flat, 170 kilometres, but the sting in the tail came with three laps of a 24-kilometre finishing circuit towards the end. And obviously the only team that came to the front over the early part of the stage was the Mappé squad. And Tom Steele's in the black, yellow and red jersey of champion of Belgium, very much a teammate of Frank Vandenbroek as well on the same Mappé squad. And now the race being stretched out here for a sprint time bonus. And watch out for the man in white, he's not far away. He certainly is, and this is the top of the Côte de Paron. You can see the big challenge there coming to Laurent Jalabert. The white jersey comes straight by. Frank Vandenbroek gets himself three seconds bonus, two seconds for Laurent Jalabert in second place, so that will give him a slightly bigger advantage in the overall standings. Twelve seconds is lead now over the Frenchman. So Jalabert sees his lead uh, of Vandenbroek uh, go out by another second, as then towards the end the attack started from the casino team. They've certainly ridden very well this year. This is Gilles Bouvard trying to go out and steal a march over the rest of the main field. But there was so much control when it came to the bottom of the climb. In fact, Laurie Aus went clear and he was joined almost immediately by David Echabaria. Echabaria, riding for the Anse squad like Laurent Jalabert, forced the attack and managed to move clear towards the summit of the climb. And David Echabaria, a young man that came onto the Anse team a couple of years ago after being the champion of Spain as an amateur. A very good sprinter, but many people see him in the future as being a great stage race rider as well. Well, he showed them all a clean pair of wheels to take out the first stage. 
He certainly did. Laurie Aus held on to take second place on that stage there, but more importantly, this is what happened behind. For third place, Frank Vandenbroek came across the line there to take four extra bonus points. That now gives him a lead of 12 seconds over Laurent Jalabert in the overall standings. But the big news of the day really was the abandon of Lance Armstrong, the Texan who's fighting back from testicular cancer. After a great performance in the Ruta del Sol when he finished 14th in the overall standings there, he abandoned the race. Nobody really knows why because his form was good. He was 23rd in the prologue time trial just yesterday. He got into the back of the team car and disappeared away from the race and away from the racing scene as well. So Armstrong, whose big comeback race, the Ruta del Sol, had finished with a 15th overall. There was a lot of expectations he would do well here, but instead, mentally, he was broken. He left for America. The next stage was from Sens de Nevers, 195 kilometers, and the race of the sun showing that it does do just that. The sun was out, and nobody too worried about the race in hand, especially Laurent Jalabert. He's won the race for the last three years, so he felt confident he could come out and do it one more time. Well, as Paul Sherry knows, he's ridden Paris-Nice. This is a race of very varying weather conditions, and it's very often in these early stages too, a battle of the sprinters for the time bonuses. It certainly was, and on this occasion, Laurent Jalabert proving that he has been one of the best sprinters in the world, getting three seconds ahead of Frank Vandenbroek there, who takes two, and those two boys think this is quite amusing. And the white jersey there, Frank Vandenbroek happy with that result, and Jalabert as well, the f and the bunch themselves completely regrouping here as they dodge the centre reservation. The gendarme showing a yellow flag, which means danger in Europe, and keeping the riders on a safe track. Amazing, Phil, this young man turned professional when he was 19 years old and now only 23 and already 30 victories, but he rides like a man who has the experience of an old professional. Well, he's won some of the smaller tours, like the Tour of Luxembourg and the Tour of Austria already, Frank van der Broek, but everybody is waiting for the arrival of him big time, and if he can lead this race from start to finish, then I think they'll say he's just about there. They do believe he's going to be the next Eddie Merckx, but he knows how to work for the team because the Mappé squad in the early part of this Paris-Nice has a two-pronged attack. They want to get stage victories as well because last year their man Tom Steeles won a whole host of stage victories and this year he gets his first one just again edging out Frédéric Moncassin, France's eternal second now who hasn't won a race since 1996. And that was a stage in the Tour de France, in fact, and indeed Frédéric Moncassin, that was at Bordeaux. Uh, must be getting a little bit fed up of finding just one rider in the peloton getting home a bit quicker. But Van der Broek increasing his lead in the white jersey competition and now the weather is cold and it is very, very miserable indeed. You wouldn't think it was only the next morning. Certainly wouldn't. Never the start this morning out towards Vichy, 194 kilometres and the Col de Beaulouis at just 40 kilometres to go to the finish, an ideal launch pad for anybody who wants to attack. But five degrees Celsius the weather at the start line and forecast on the horizon is snow so everybody wrapping up as much as they can for what is going to be a very long hard day in the saddle Pascal Hervé from the Festina squad always a man you can count on when you need some aggressive attacking atrocious conditions and I'm sure Lance Armstrong rather pleased he gave this race up now looking at these pictures but a chance for you young cyclists to see just how well wrapped up top professionals are until the sun comes out and then it's a matter of dropping back and unloading all that excess baggage. Frank Vandenbroek taking off his raincoat here at the back. There's one or two riders trying to prevent themselves from overheating because that is exactly what these riders want to do. They want to make sure that they're racing in the ideal conditions. But in fact, Vandenbroek says he's not too cold, so he's actually putting his jacket back on again. <laughs> Well, the French champion always aggressive, Stefan Bart, a very good sprinter, but he's not scared of going out on his own. He, in fact, attacked after 129 kilometers and built up a maximum lead of 54 seconds. But riding for the very successful casino squad, behind all of the work once again was being done by Mappé, trying to keep it together for their man, Tom Steeles. And the Mappé team setting the tempo. Once again, the benefit of a strong team around you. And Frank Vandenbroek uh, proving to be a very solid leader now. The Anse team who are trying to manoeuvre a good position for Laurent Jalabert, always in evidence. And Laurent, uh, Alex Zule here, Paul, also having a little dig and trying to find his form for the upcoming big races. 
Certainly is. I think he's trying to prove his position on the team here because he's now riding alongside Richard Vironk and the change to this squad over the winter months has made him very aggressive and I think he's got a lot of hopes for this season, hoping that he can well ride well in the Tour of Italy and the Tour de France later in the year. But the Gann rider at the back has also been very aggressive so far this season. That was Stuart O'Grady. The uh, interest of Laurent Jalabert, the number one rider, streaking across to join the forward group here. O'Grady in the white Gann jersey, third wheel, but then the whole field regrouping for the big sprint finish. It certainly was, and the man now in the yellow points leader's jersey, Tom Steeles, comes to the line again to take a very easy victory ahead of Andre Schmiel. And Stuart O'Grady finished third place, so the little sprinter from Australia riding well. But Tom Steeles, a little bit uh, precarious on the top of the podium there, looking very easy, and the best sprinter so far on the roads of Paris-Nice. Still no change in the overall standings. The young Frank Vandenbrucker at the top of the leaderboard with an 11-second advantage over Laurent Jalabert. But stage five, Phil, was the stage that all of these riders were worrying about because from Couset it went to the top of the Col de la République just out Saint-Étienne. And the news on the start line was that snow was on the horizon. And in fact, it was confirmed as being on top of the Col de Beaulieu where the riders had come over the previous day and the race director, the technical director, Gilbert Duclos-Lazal had decided it wasn't worth the risk and here he is explaining it to the riders that he was cutting out the climb and was going to restart the race 44 kilometres into the day. And there was no complaints from Jean-Luc, uh, no complaints rather from Frank van der Broek and I don't suppose Jean-Luc either. Certainly not uh, the riders getting into the cars at uh, kilometre zero where they should have pulled in the flag to start racing and driving to the new start point, which would in fact cut the stage down to just 113 kilometres. And this is why Gilbert Duclos Lasalle decided to cut the race short this afternoon, because of these conditions. And if he cast his mind back to 1980, it was in conditions like this that in fact he won Paris-Nice. Yes, and I remember him coming and sitting in front of my television monitor afterwards and cheering himself up the climb as it was recorded and played out to the world. Well, I think he was premature in actually cancelling the stage. The snow was not that bad, but anyway, the riders uh, had a shorter stage by 44 kilometres, and then, in wet conditions, they got themselves moving again. They certainly did, but it was again the Festina squad who'd been happy, I think, by the performance of Alex Zuller the day before, who sent out an early attack. Bruno Boscardin riding on the front with Pascal Hervé and Laurie Aus of Cosino. They went out to try and toughen up the race and make it a little bit more difficult for Frank van den Broek because today was the day that the finish was going to be at the summit of the Col de la République and this was going to be a deciding day in Paris-Nice. And the MAPE team were trying to get their man up near the head of affairs ready for the showdown time on the climb to the summit finish. Tom Steele's in the yellow jersey there, which is the sprint leader's jersey in this event. And then being caught here was Bruno Boscadin and Laurie Aus in the field regrouping ready for the climb. But a lot of work had been done by the MAPE squad, so Frank Vandenbroek decided he needed to repay his teammates, so he went out and put a lot of pressure on the front. He was joined by Alex Zuller, but one man was missing from this very select group of the front of affairs. It was Laurent Jarabert. He wasn't able to match the pace of the young man from Belgium, and he was put into severe difficulty on the early slopes of the climb. Heavily marked by the Festina riders, and with only one teammate to help him, things weren't looking too good for the world at number one. Conditions were deteriorating, as they tried to split up the field. And the man setting the pace, Frank Vandenbroek. And the last man able to stay with Frank Vandenbroek was in fact one of the teammates of Laurent Jalabert, Garcia. And you can see him just on the back wheel there, suffering a little bit as the team car of Patrick Lefebvre, the director of MAPE, comes alongside Vandenbroek and says, look, you can't ride to the finish like this with a passenger, put the hammer down. And that's exactly what Vandenbroek did. Conditions are still deteriorating, just three kilometers left to climb to the line. And the man in the white jersey reflecting the snow often seen on this race route was now free as a bird. It certainly was. This young man at 23 years of age, he knew exactly what he had to do this morning. He came out there, didn't worry at all. He let his team do all of the work. And as he came to the finish, he really opened up the gas as much as he could because this is his second stage victory in Paris-Nice. But more importantly, I think, Phil, the fact is a lot of his rivals now a long way behind. My plans have been clear since the very start, Vandenbroek said. Get to the Col de la République with not too much of a deficit. 
and then it's all up to me to uh, assume all the to all the work that needs to be done. It's easy to say it, not quite so easy to do it. At the start of the climb, I left uh, Zulu and Dufo and Jalabert do the attacking, but I followed them so easily, I decided uh, my legs felt really good today. There's definitely something in the legs. I was uh, hurting everybody else. That gave me an incredible feeling. What I showed today was that um, I'm, not, I'm not necessarily confident the race doesn't finish till Nice. Well, they all say that, of course. He's absolutely right, but he's riding now like a man who is capable of winning this tour. And the next day, it was a beautiful sunny day, strong crosswinds blowing, and Frank Vandenbroek's team were in charge again. They certainly were. Montelimar to Cisteron, 190 kilometers and two very tough climbs. The hardest, the Col de L'Amour, climbing to 1,200 meters. And once again, whenever the road tilted up to the front, there was challenges coming from the Festina squad and also from the Anse squad of Laurent Jarabert. Now, this is one of the nicest regions of France. Even in March, it can be quite warm, around 65 degrees Fahrenheit. It's always desert-like conditions, and it brings the best out of the field. But everywhere that Laurent Jalabert went, Frank Vandenbroek was sure to go. Whenever you see the yellow jersey of Jalabert, Frank Vandenbroek very attentive. He realizes that Jalabert was going to be his closest rival. But the Anse team still trying to hold them together. Jalabert once again testing Frank Vandenbroek to the front. But the man who has won this race three times in succession was soon to realize that Frank Vandenbroek wasn't going to give up that white jersey easily. Jalabert in great shape coming into Paris-Nice just a week before he'd won the Tour de haute var a very difficult race in exactly the same area, so he knows these roads quite well, but still he wasn't able to outfox Frank Vandenbroek, but what he did manage to do on the early slopes of the Côte de L'Amour was isolate him away from his teammates who had been working for the last four or five days. But again on the descent, it all came back together, the main field regrouping, and still Frank Vandenbroek very comfortably sitting in the main field. Covering the moves by Laurent Jalabert, but once the road started to go downhill even more, Jalabert took the chance to try and isolate Frank Vandenbroek once again. A group of 13 riders got clear and only one rider from Mappé, that was Frank Vandenbroek. And Jalabert still deciding to go out and try and take the race which he's won for the last three years. He managed to steal a marge of about 100 metres over that group, but still it was nailed back by Frank Vandenbroek. Vandenbroek riding very confidently, knowing that all he has to do is control the attacks of Laurent Jarabert just to stay in front as he gets down towards Nice. That then gave the chance to Bobby Julik and Aitor Ozar to escape the group because everybody wanted to try and get a stage victory. They were at the front of the race for over 40 kilometres and had a maximum lead of over one minute. And in the absence of Lance Armstrong, Bobby Julik now rapidly becoming the top favourite rider from the United States, uh, taking part in that two-man attack. Once it all came back together, every one of these riders still felt they had a great chance of victory at the end of this 190 kilometre stage. But as they headed down towards the finish line, it was once again going to be a big bunch sprint. And one man outfoxed all of the sprinters, Andre Schmiel, now riding as a Belgian, coming up for his third victory of the year. And in second and third place, two riders from Banesto, Francisco Mancebo and Jose Luis Arieta. And so a man who we always consider as a good finisher but never a pure sprinter got the stage and the sun stayed with the race now as he got one stage closer to Nice. Stage seven, Cisteron to Cannes, and that was the race that all of the riders are looking forward to because finally they'll get a chance to see the Mediterranean coastline at the horizon. Frank Vandenbroek looking very confident at the start of the stage, realizing now just two days remaining, and all he had to do was guard the attacks of Laurent Jalabert. But this fill was a very difficult terrain to race over because never is there any flat cut road on this uh, course. And indeed, the roads are always narrow, they twist and turn a lot, but the weather is usually guaranteed to be nice. This is the nice end of Paris Nice now, where the riders usually have crossed through the Medal of France, where the weather is expected to be frosty and snowy. Now they're racing down, quite literally, to the sun. There certainly are a lot of work being done by the Mappé squad, but the early move actually came after just 29 kilometres when that Australian Stuart O'Grady went out and started a four-man breakaway. The four-man breakaway was whittled down to three when he was joined by Pascal Hervé and the rider just sitting on the back there, Gianmatteo Fanini. They built up a maximum lead of almost six and a half minutes, 
but as they got close to the finish, the speed of the main field and the gap started to tumble. Panini in search of form for the Tour of Italy, where he'll be expected to assist Mario Cipollini in the big sprints, while Stuart O'Grady, the Australian, always looking for an opportunity to land a big bike race win. But Pascal Ove is a very good tactician. He knew as the main field was starting to close in, he had to try and go out alone towards the finish, dropping Matteo Fanini and also Stuart O'Grady. Ove, a stage winner in last year's uh, Giro d'Italia, and the specialist at breaking away when the roads go up, they gave it his best shot. But the field were very attentive and always looked likely to pick him up. And still, the final climb of the day, the Col de Testanier, was a chance for Laurent Jalabert to throw down the gauntlet once more, but always attentive, always there whenever there was any danger. To do the work himself, Frank Vandenbroek, resplendent in his white jersey, controlled every attack that the Frenchman could throw at him. A surprise winner of the prologue time trial. Everybody thought he would lose his jersey within a matter of stages heading down towards Nice. Nobody now was giving him any odds at all because they were expecting him to win this race outright. The speed of the main field brought everybody back together, but still, as they came alongside the Mediterranean coast, Richard Vironc, resplendent in his bleached hair, tries to get a victory because he comes from not too far away from here, the small town of Toulon. And in the big sprint finish, André Schmil was repeating what he did a day before when he takes on the champion of France, Stefan Bart, in the sprint. Schmil makes it his second straight victory, already the winner this year, the trophy Louis Puig and Kerner Brussels Kern, and now he has two stages in Paris-Nice as well. But certainly more important in third place there, the yellow jersey of Laurent Jalabert getting himself four more seconds, bringing himself to within 40 seconds of the overall lead of Frank Vandenbroek. Win number four of the year for André Schmiel and certainly starting to look very confident for the classics ahead. But Frank Vandenbroek, applauded by his mum on the finish line, has just one more day to go to become a great Belgian winner of Paris-Nice. And no time trial to end Paris-Nice this year, unlike in previous years. And in fact, apart from last year, he used to finish up the Col d'Ez. But now the Promenade des Anglais was all set to welcome a Belgian winner of this tour for the first time since 1977. And this is what the riders face in the early part of the course. 160 kilometers circuit and two very steep climbs. And early on, everybody wanted to try and break clear because they knew that if they didn't attack over this part of the course, it would all come down to a big bunch sprint on the Promenade des Anglais. And in this region known as the Alpe Marie team, the roads are very tortuous and very, very dangerous if you don't stay alert. And Vandenbroek was conscious of that now. He certainly was. He's used his team very intelligently over the last few days, and they've ridden well with him. And I think a lot of advice has come into the ears of Vandenbroek from his own teammate, Johan Museo. One of the reasons why he left the Lotto squad back in 1995 was so that he could ride alongside the great Belgian hero. But when they came down onto the Promenade des Anglais, they faced 10 laps of a 9-kilometer course, and four leaders managed to steal a march off the front. And in the breakaway, riding for GAM was Francois Simon, the other riders, Arthur Casputis, Federic Gaydon, the winner of Paris-Roubaix last year, and new professional Nicolas Vagondi. But as the riders approached the finish, a lot of pressure on the front really being put on by the Festina squad, and I could not understand why they were trying to pull the race together, because they don't have a major sprinter. Maybe it was just pride as Richard Virenc on the front was trying to pull back a breakaway made up of a lot of other French teams. Screaming down the long, long road of the Promenade des Anglais, normally packed with traffic, the breakaway was being reeled in. It certainly was. This young man, though, tried to prolong his attack, Nicolas Vogondi, who Marc Madio, the team manager of the Francaise de Jure, thinks is a star of the future. But this man in the white jersey certainly is, Frank Vandenbroek, resplendent in that white jersey on the Promenade des Anglais, looking to try and move his man, Tom Steele, to the front for the final sprint. And with a massive crowd watching in real spring-like conditions, the main field has circled the Promenade des Anglais, and it soon became apparent there was going to be a big bunch sprint. But when it comes down to bunch sprinting, Mappé certainly know how to lead out their men. The last man there on the front is one of the Belgians, Wilfred Peters, and right in his wheel is Tom Steeles. The champion of Belgium, and Steeles already one stage winner to his credit now, starts the run for the line again. Steeles on the left of the picture, and the stage snatched from him by Capel of the Cofidis team. 
right in the middle of the action there, getting third place across the line. A very good move by the young sprint, Australian sprinter, Jay Sweet. And in fourth spot, George Hincapi. Christoph Capella, he was a champion at the Olympic Games in 1996 in the team pursuit, but certainly the man that everybody in Belgium will be celebrating tomorrow is Frank van den Broek. It became the first winner since Freddie Martins, the great Belgian sprinter, back in 1977. Now Frank really can be a star of the future. It was the most intense week of my career. To, to start with a win in the prologue, and then the, the day, the most beautiful day, the day where I was the best uh, I've ever been on a bicycle must have been the Col de la République. That was the, the greatest day of my career so far. And it certainly was as he's joined on the podium by the winner of the points, Tom Steeles, and second man overall, Laurent Jalabert. And so the final result, Frank van der Broek beating Jalabert by 40 seconds in the end, and Marcelino Garcia, 48 seconds back at Alex Zula, lying there in fourth place and promising great things for the 1998 season. I hope you've enjoyed this short look at the Pyrenees stage race. It certainly was a very special one, which found a very special winner. For Paul Sherwin, I'm Phil Liggett again saying so long for now.